Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today we have an exciting topic for you, especially if you are making the big switch from Windows to a Mac. Let's get started what it looks like to move from Windows to a Mac operating system. So as soon as you turn on the Mac, you're presented with the login screen the account it's going to be either your iCloud account and it depends on how you set it up initially or it is a local account particular to this PC just like in Windows you're going to simply enter the username and the password now that we are logged into the Mac let me go over some of the key components that we see and compare those components with those of Windows so that you can make the connection between the two. On the very bottom, this is what's called the dock. The dock is, is very similar to the Windows taskbar, which has a listing of icons in Windows, as you may be familiar. But here, uh, the icons are, are a little larger and more visually appealing. On the very left, we have the finder. The finder is what opens by default once you're logged in. So you're able to find stuff in your computer. In this case, it's displaying the various applications that have been docked or tagged to show up on the docking area. Uh, as this is opened, notice that the finder here on the top, it has this menu of the various options. And this will be typical when you use an application in the Mac OS. There will be the menu on the very top, that stuff that you have opened, and then you can launch the applications directly from here on the bottom. So if I open Safari, notice that now I have the Safari window that opens up. The Finder is also used to locate files similar to the Windows File Manager, and I'll be getting into more detail on the ins and outs of it. You have here the recent files, the, you can locate applications, stuff on the desktop, documents, downloads, iCloud, and network locations. One thing that you may be noticing at this point as a new user of a Mac is that instead of the controls for these windows uh, being here on the right hand side, uh, like in Windows, on a Mac, the controls are on the left. So you have the X to close the window. The little minus sign here is to minimize this window. And then the green is to make it full screen or tile to the left or to the right of the screen. And this is consistent through any of the applications that you open on a Mac. As part of the dock, you also, another component here is the launch pad. And uh, uh, we'll get into that uh, shortly. Safari, this is um, the web browser for uh, Mac OS, which is uh, similar to Chrome, Firefox in Windows or Microsoft Edge. Messages, this is that component that it ties really closely to the integration with your mobile phone. You can receive and send text messages directly from your Mac. Uh, next, you have the mail. This is the built-in mail application. Now, if you had Microsoft Outlook on this Mac, uh, you'd be using Outlook as well, or you can use the mail application directly from the MacBook. Maps, you can launch and navigate the Apple Maps. Pictures, it ties to your pictures. And FaceTime, the calendar, contacts, reminders, notes, Apple TV, Apple Music, Podcasts, News, and the App Store. Now, the Apple Store, it's much more superior on the Mac. That's where you'd be able to download uh, the various applications. Here is uh, System Preferences. This will get you to change settings on the system and then various applications. This is productivity software that comes as part of Apple. And in this case, I have downloaded and installed pages. To the right, typically you have the downloads option. This is where all your downloads will show up. The recent downloads will be here in the bottom. And then to look up uh, downloads, you can either open up Finder here in the left and go to downloads, or you can come over here to the right and go to downloads and notice that Camtasia was the last thing that I downloaded. And then you can also open up Finder, and it will be as if you click on this Finder icon here on the left. On the right here, you have a little tutorial on how to use the MacBook. And on the far right, the trash, equivalent to the Windows Recycle Bin. So if I have something that I have deleted, that's where it will be stored. 
and you can empty this trash directly from uh, here by clicking on the empty button obviously once you delete something it's going to be nearly impossible to get it back so that's components of the dock area again it's very similar to the taskbar but centered and more visually appealing now you can remove stuff from the taskbar from here to remove it notice i'm uh, right clicking or uh, tapping on the pad here and choosing options and this will remove it from the dock or you can uh, show it wherever it's launched from the finder from the file manager or file explorer and so on or you can open the app from here so basically you can dock items in there or you can take items off from here as necessary so to remove an item here from the dock you simply click on it hold it down and then drag it and throw it to the bin and notice it says remove from the dock now on the very top it will show this menu of the various options for that particular application despite whatever application you open there is also the apple icon here on the very top left and this is another way that you can get to the various settings for this Mac. So you can learn about this Mac. You can go to the system preferences, to the app store, the app. Force quit is to close an application forcefully. It's like end task in Windows. Typically, you don't need to do that. But let's say right now I have Safari opened and I want to force quit Safari. I click here on the Apple icon, click on force quit, and it uh, asks me what do you want to close in this case, and I want to close Safari to force it, and there it is. The system preferences, this is where you'll look at the various settings for this MacBook. This is where you'll change and uh, check out the various settings for this uh, system. So you click here on system preferences, and it will display all the various options such as your Apple ID, the sharing and so on, general settings, uh, desktop and screen saver, the docking bar, how to display it, mission control, Siri, it's also integrated into this, and the various passwords, users and accounts and uh, so on. So a lot of the settings are very common to what you typically have on an iPhone and then various updates, Bluetooth devices, and so on. You can search for this stuff from here as well. So if you're not sure where something is located, you can search for it. And this would be similar to the searching in Windows 11, the Windows search. Comparing this with uh, Windows, this would be like the settings area in Windows to get to all your settings in your device. To the right, we have the settings for the battery and battery preferences and so on. Then for your connection to the Wi-Fi, this is where you'd select your Wi-Fi connections and add new connections and so on, or net uh, preferences. You have this search icon here, and this is where you can uh, bring up the spotlight search that will search for everything in your computer. It will search uh, from uh, items from the browser, from music, Apple Store, and Maps, and so on. To the right of this, you also have this icon where you can control the various settings, such as the display brightness, to turn on and off the sound. So this is similar to the control settings on the bottom right in Windows 11 that you may be familiar with. To the right, here is uh, where you have the Siri option. You can enable Siri and it will perform searches very similar to how you use it in an iPhone. On the far right where we have the date time, you can click on it and it will display the various notifications various widgets somewhat similar to what Windows now does with Windows 11 widgets but this is where your notifications will show up on the Mac so I hope this is helpful just to give you an idea to navigate the interface on the Mac OS please stay tuned for the other modules I'm gonna go into more detail about using the various components and how to go about familiarizing yourself with a Mac OS in this segment of the Mac OS tutorial on transitioning from Windows to a Mac, I'm going to go over some of those components here in the bottom on the docking area, very similar to the Windows taskbar. So this is where you can launch various applications that are available on this MacBook. Now, one of the key components of the docking area or of the Mac OS is the Finder. 
The Finder is a tool that you can use to locate files in your system. Here we have the Favorites area. The Favorites area is just stuff that you're constantly referencing or wanting to access. As we open Finder on the top, we have the Finder options. So you have the preferences for Finder, the various services and so on. And then under File, we have different settings. So if you don't see something in here, you can always go to the menu on the top and try and change and look at the various settings. Airdropping is if you want to send something to a contact that is nearby you to share it with them. And under Recents, this would be documents that you have been working on and you have accessed recently. Then under Applications, this is where all the applications on this system will uh, show up. Typically, any of these applications, if you want them as part of the doc, you can simply drag it from the Finder to the docking area, and that's how you pin one of the applications as part of the docking area. The other section is the iCloud area. The iCloud is where you have the various items that you are synchronizing with this account on iCloud. Under Shared, this is files that show up through iCloud that are shared with you. Under Network Locations, this is where you can scan for other devices in your network. And then further down, this is where you can access components based on tagging of those components. So if I tag this as green and I want the system to be categorizing them by color, whenever I go down here and I look for any of the green items, notice it will list this because it was tagged as green. The desktop, so these are stuff that are on the desktop. If I want something to show up on the desktop, I can copy in something in here it will be displayed as part of the desktop area. Under Documents, this is where all the items that are under your documents in this system will display. And then further down here, you have the Downloads area, very similar to Windows. Here on the top, this is where you can select how you want to display these items within the Finder, within the File Explorer, if we were to use a Windows terminology. So you can have them to display as icons and it will look like this, or you can have them as lists or columns or as gallery. So for example, gallery is giving us a, a preview of the document and then information about the document and various tags for it Next to it, we have uh, how we want to sort these files. Obviously, I could sort them by name or sort them by kind or by date modified and so on. So unlike Windows, one of the cool features is, is that you can share just like in an iOS device or in a phone device here in a MacBook because it's, everything is so tightly integrated between mobile and desktop or laptop in this case, you can share stuff directly from your Mac. So if I click here on the share, I can airdrop it, I can email it, I can send a text message, or I can add it as part of notes, or even more options from here. Next to it, we can uh, select to edit the tags for a particular item that we have selected. And then below, how do you want to group stuff? And uh, also other options that you could check for yourself or to delete things as well. On the far right, this is how you search for files. Now, obviously, I do not have that many things here, but if I wanted to search for anything with Mac, notice it will display all those items that have that word in it. Again, keep in mind that you can use these menus here on the top as well. But one of the other key components to remember under the Go area, you can actually go to various areas in your computer. By default, if you notice, you don't see the, similar to like we see in Windows, the C drive, the root of the C drive and all that type of stuff. It doesn't display it by default as part of the Finder. However, you can go here under the Go area and click on Computer. You can navigate the hard drive of this PC. This would be like the C drive equivalent on a Windows machine. So we double click here and then this is where you can see the users. 
the system files, the various applications, and so on. And if I go to users, you can see very similar structure like we see in Windows. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you are connecting to a server system in a workplace environment and you need to map a network file, and to do that, you'd need to go in the Go area and then go to Connect to Server. And then this is where you enter the server name. You typically need to put those two slashes and then you'd click on connect and then it will prompt you to enter your credentials. You can also add favorite servers by clicking on add. And I can't demonstrate this part right now because I'm not connected to a, a corporate network. But once you add those favorite servers, they'll be listed here for future use. Also, the map drives that will show up here in the locations area in Finder. Those are some of the features, and the, this is some of the functionality with using Finder in Mac OS. In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to create new files and folders. How do you manage files in Mac OS? So to manage files in Mac OS, you typically need to use what's called the Finder. And the Finder is very similar to File Explorer in Windows. Here we can create a file or a folder directly under the Documents area. So we click on Favorites here on the left and then go to Documents. Again, if you don't see the Documents option, you can simply expand it to go to Documents. To create a new folder, we can either click on File and then choose New Folder. Notice you can also use the command key and N. That's a shortcut for creating a new folder. And then hit Enter. So that was using the file option on the top. The other option is that you can right click. And the right clicking on the touchpad on a MacBook is by using both fingers on your keyboard and pushing down on the touchpad. So that's one option if you're not using an external mouse. And then here we select new folder and then start typing the folder name. Now that we have these folders, we can organize them depending on how you want them to, to be displayed by using those options on the top. If I want this file, this document one, to be moved to a particular folder, I can simply drag it and just drop it in that particular folder. If you move something accidentally, notice that under Edit, there is an option to undo it, which is Command Z. And then if we go back here, the document that I just moved accidentally is back to where it was originally. If I want to copy this file, you can use Edit and choose Copy Document. Or under Edit, there is also Command C, which is very similar to Windows Control C. So Command C. Now I go to a new folder. And in here, let's say I want to paste it. You can use Command V or you could use Edit and choose Paste. To rename the file, you can again with both fingers tap on your touchpad and then select rename and then give it a new name and then hit enter. The functionality is very similar to that of Windows in both creating files and folders. The key here is to either remember the shortcuts instead of control C that we used in Windows. Here you use the command C and the command V to paste something. I must mention as well that most Windows users, they find that the Finder component, it's not as intuitive as in Windows and manipulating files and folders is not quite as easy as using Windows, particularly if you have used Windows for a long time. The concepts are the same. You create a folder the same way. You copy a file the same way. You rename it very similarly. And most of the options for that particular file are going to be either by right clicking or looking in the properties of that file or using the options in the menu bar on the top. In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the launch pad. The launch pad is very similar to the start menu in Windows 11 or in Windows. 
We click here from the docking area or from the dock area. We click on launch pad and this displays all the applications that are installed in this MacBook. You can get to this list of applications very similar to right clicking in Windows. Once you open Launchpad, you can search for an application. So let's say I want to locate pages. So I just type PA and it's going to bring up that particular application. And once I locate the application, you tap on it and it will open it up. So that's the launch pad. Anytime you want to launch an application, go to the launch pad, search for the application, click on it to open it up, and that's it. Very similar to the Windows Start menu. So in this segment of the tutorial on Mac OS, I'm going to go over using Safari on a MacBook. So the next icon here is actually Safari. This is the default browser for MacBooks. So very similar to any other browsers that you have used, you simply come to the address bar on the very top and type the URL that you want to visit and then hit enter. One thing to remember here with the Mac OS is that the controls for this particular application are going to be on the left hand side unlike in a Windows PC. Now, if I want to make this application larger and full screen, you click here on full screen on the green icon and select full screen. It takes away the docking area and we can use just this particular application. To get out of the full screen mode, we can simply press escape on the keyboard and it will bring us back to the options that we're using earlier. You can use the minimize button here to minimize it and then you can also use the close button on the top left. One of the key things to remember is that again this is an application that we are using in Mac OS and the very top here we have the menu bar for this particular application. So for example we can customize the preferences for Safari or we can close Safari by clicking on Safari and then quit Safari. So typically you'd have the name of the application as one of the first items here on the taskbar. Notice that you have also about this Mac here on the far left, but the first item in the, this particular menu, and then you have other options along the way. So if we wanted to change the preferences for Safari, we click on uh, the Safari, select preferences, and customize then the start page, because I want to remove the history, where to save the files, and so on, how to use tabs, whether you want them separate, and so on, and or compact, autofill, passwords, how to manage the passwords, searching, what default search engine to utilize, privacy, and so on and so on. So you can check those options for yourself. But the idea here is that nowadays, as we know, uh, you can't really have um, a functional personal computer unless you're able to connect to the internet. And by default on a MacBook or a Mac device, whether it's a MacBook or iMac, you need a browser. And the browser in a Mac is Safari. You can install and choose to download Chrome or Brave or Firefox or and other applications as well. But remember that Safari is built with privacy in mind. It's integrated with the Apple security protocols in place. If you wanted to display the bookmarks, you can click on this icon here and it will show your favorites and bookmarks on the, on the left hand side. If you wanted to share a page or to share something, again on the Mac, again it's tight integration with the smartphone, it allows you to share this page either to add it as a bookmark from here and then it'll show up on my bookmarks area. Or, or you can share it with messages, uh, which is text it to someone else or to email it or to airdrop. Airdrop is sending it to one of your contacts that is nearby you. To open something in a new tab, you click on this, the new tab icon. In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to use messaging or send text messages through your Mac. Mac OS integrates text messaging as part of the operating system, and that is done through iCloud and obviously having an iPhone, an iOS device, or an iPad OS device. Now, to locate the messaging, we can either click here on messages on the dock area or we can go to the launch pad and locate the messages application or search for it if it's too many of them in there and we don't know how to locate it. Now we click on it to view uh, previous messages. We simply click on the messages here on the left. The message content will display on the right hand side. 
to create a new message can search for the contact in the search area or we can uh, create a new message from scratch and then put in the number manually obviously that's a fictitious number then we type the message here and then remember you can also add here photos emojis and other components as well and then once you're ready you press enter now at this point the message will utilize iCloud to send it out and responses will show up on the left hand side but this is how you'll read the messages and then to reply you just type right below it in this segment of the Mac OS tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to recover files once you delete them from your system. On the far right here, notice that you'll have the trash bin area. Let's say I have this file and I go here to Finder and I have this My Essay. It's just a document. And let's say I'm done with it, but somehow I deleted it. Now, typically to delete something, you'd right click on the file and select move to trash. You can also drag something to trash. Now it's gone. If I go back and let's say two days from now, I uh, for some reason need that back, we go back here to trash and I want to recover my essay, then you can click here on undo move my essay. And that's how you'll get it back. So we go here to my essay, we click on the file and then click on undo my essay. Now if we go back to Finder and we go to Documents and there is my essay that we recovered. Obviously if you wanted to empty the trash you can click here on Empty Trash. However I do not suggest that you utilize that feature unless you're really sure that you want to get rid of something. So let's say this image I really don't need it anymore in my and that will allow me to empty the trash. It will empty everything that is in the trash at that point. Again, use that with much uh, caution. In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to get to the various settings in your MacBook. To get to the settings, we can either use this System Preferences option in the dock area or click here on uh, the Apple icon on the top left and then go to System Preferences. Once we are in System Preferences, to really familiarize yourself with this system, go through the various menus and check what's there, how you want to change things. Maybe take a snapshot of the settings, how they were initially, and then adjust the settings as you prefer. If you wanted to add printers, you go to printers and then click on the plus sign and then select the printer that you want to add and click on add. So the key on using a MacBook or a Mac system is to use this plus and minus here on the left hand side. To get back to the main menu for the system settings, you use this back arrow on the top. So that's how you get to the system settings and how you install a printer in our case that I just demonstrated. In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial, I'll demonstrate some of the functionality of the trackpad. Unlike Windows where the touchpad is really not very helpful, in a Mac OS you use a single tab, double tap or triple tap if you use one or two or more fingers and if you swipe from the left and from the right everything does some specific function. Now to get to those functions we go here to system settings and then go to system preferences. So click on the Apple icon, system preferences and if we go to trackpad notice that we have these various options that we can utilize a single tap and holding it down in our case it'll display the properties for that particular item that is selected the secondary click by default it's done using the two fingers so very similar to how you see on this animation on the right hand side we use both fingers to tap tap to click well, by default, it's not enabled. You'd simply tap on the touchpad and it will select an object. Now here you can also tweak the speed of the navigation, the speed of the click and the speed of the tracking as well. Notice here you have additional options such as the zoom and scroll. So as you see in the animation, if you hold both fingers, you can either scroll up and down so if I go here to my Safari, I'm using both fingers, I can scroll up or down. If I wanted to zoom in, use both fingers 
the thumb and the index finger and you can zoom in and out very similar here in the animation. And there's a zoom in and out. And then there's also smart zooming where you double tap with both fingers and the system is going to try to bring full screen what might be the best visual aspect of it. You can also, as you can see here, you can rotate an object. Now under more gestures to swipe between pages you simply hold both fingers within the area of the touchpad and you're moving from one tab to another in the browser. Now to swipe between the apps notice that you're using three fingers and you're moving from left to right within the touchpad area. To view the notifications notice that you are swiping from outside of the touchpad to the area of the touchpad. So it would look like that and I'm doing it now similarly to the animation. So again the key there is start outside and then move into the touchpad. So there are functions within the touchpad area and outside of the touchpad area. The mission control it will display all the various windows and notice it's using three fingers to display all the various applications. You can enable also this app expose where you're swiping with three fingers. So you're basically switching between multiple apps on the trackpad. The launch pad, this is how you display the launch pad. So basically you're using three fingers to show you the launch pad. So going out that'll display the desktop. It's actually one of the pretty neat features in a, a MacBook, the use of the touchpad for additional functionality unlike that of Windows. And the best way is to practice it with these gestures and it will make the navigation a lot easier than in Windows. In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial I'll demonstrate how to change the wallpaper on your desktop. To change the wallpaper we can either go here to system preferences from the dock area or we can go to the Apple icon and then go to system preferences and then we select desktop and wallpaper. From here we can select one of the options that we prefer to display. Some of those wallpapers are available online so they have to be downloaded so you need to click on this download button and it will change the whole theme and the visual look of the desktop. In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial I'll demonstrate how to update the operating system in your MacBook. So we need to go to the system preferences either from the docking area or we click here on the Apple icon and then we go about this Mac and then we click software update. Once we are ready to update, we click on update now. Typically it takes longer actually in a Mac, so you need to be prepared to take at least 15 to 20 minutes for the updates to be applied. Unless it's a really minor update, of course it depends on the speed of your computer. You click on update now and then follow the prompts from there. In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial I'll demonstrate how to install applications in your system. So you can install applications by downloading them from the web but the most common one is by using the App Store. As you open it up you'll have various options on the left here by work or play or uh, development tools or you can search here is let's say Excel. We want to download Excel. Once you locate the application then simply click here on get. Now some of those will be paid and others will be free. But click on install and at this stage it will prompt you to use your username and password. And then once you utilize the credentials for your iCloud account it will download the software. For some of the applications you might have to license them such as the Office products. But that's all that there is to it to install an application in a Mac system. Then once the application has been downloaded and installed the application will show up in the launch pad. And earlier I downloaded Microsoft Word. Then you're going to launch it from the launch pad by simply clicking on it to open it up. 
In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to reboot your MacBook or your Mac system. So to reboot your Mac system, you need to go to System Preferences, either from the dock area or click on the Apple icon and then select Restart. Just like with any other system, even though MacBooks are much better at managing the system resources and uh, so on and not needing to reboot them as often, still if you go weeks and months without rebooting, it's going to slow down, so it is best to restart the system every so often. You'd simply click here on restart and then just wait for it to start back up again and then enter the password when prompted to do so. In this segment of the Mac OS tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to shut down your MacBook Mac OS system. So to shut it down, we go to System Preferences or we click on the Apple icon here and then select Shut Down and then simply wait for the system to shut down and that's all that there is to it. It's best to shut it down every so often or to reboot the system every so often, maybe every week or every other week because even though it's a Mac and it's much better than Windows, it still needs a complete restart to clear the memory and for the applications to start from scratch.